I want to start this morning by giving you a little bit of a peek behind the curtain when it comes to preaching. Now, some of you have been listening to Lutheran sermons for 20 or 50 or 80 years, and you have a pretty strong sense of what you're going to hear from the pulpit. You probably know that you will not hear a lot of fire and brimstone or judgment or strict moral teachings when I'm in the pulpit. Although, if you want that, tell me and we can start doing that. But as you know, Zion is in a bit of a renaissance, and we have many lovely new friends and new visitors who join us every week. And the thing that I find particularly exciting about our new folks is the tremendous amount of diversity of faith backgrounds that they bring. So, for example, a few of our newer, fo newer folks grew up as Lutherans. But the majority of our friends grew up in another denomination. For example, we have a good number of folks who grew up Catholic or Baptist. Those are the two that we see the most. But we also have a growing number of folks who did not grow up in church at all. That is a huge variety of experience. In fact, this is what I find so incredibly exciting about being at Zion in this moment. The diversity of stories and experiences and questions and curiosities and languages makes for such a rich and interesting community. I'm not going to lie, it's kind of every pastor's dream to be in a church like this. In fact, I would encourage you on any Sunday to grab a new buddy and go to lunch and just listen to the stories that are in this sanctuary. You will be fascinated and awed by the incredible work of God among us. This is an exciting place to be. But all these experiences also mean that, when we come into, that we come into worship expecting different things or not quite knowing what we should be expecting. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a Lutheran approach to preaching so that you can better understand what's going on with Lydia in this morning's reading. There's a lot of ways to understand Lydia, as she is a fascinating character in the New Testament. But I am going to invite you to understand her through a lens of grace. And to do that, you're going to need a quick Lutheran 101 approach to preaching. So let's dig in. Chances are, if you grew up in a Baptist or Evangelical or even a Methodist church, you might come into worship expecting to hear a sermon about Christian life. You might hear a lot about the context or take a particular story and turn it into a model for everyday life. If the story is about Jesus calming the storm, for example, you might hear a three-step sermon about recognizing the storms in your life, tuning into God's presence, and then trusting God's action in the storm. That is not a bad sermon, of course. Sometimes, in fact, you will hear sermons like that from me. But on the whole, the purpose of preaching in those traditions is to instruct you in the Christian life. This is how you live a Christian life. The sermon tells you how to be a Christian. Now, if you grew up in a Catholic or other highly liturgical church, you might expect a sermon about the power of the sacraments. You might hear about how receiving the sacraments enables a special grace in you to live in a certain way. The purpose of the sermon is to point you toward the table and the font or any other number of sacraments and other traditions. These are also good sermons, and sometimes you will hear a sermon like that from me. But on the whole, the purpose of preaching in that tradition is to point people towards a sacramental understanding of God. The, the sermon tells you how to experience God in a particular way. Now, if your background is more Pentecostal, you might be used to hearing a sermon about the emotional experience of God. The purpose of the sermon is to pull you into the emotional life of God. Also, good sermons. Sometimes you might hear a sermon like that from me. However, the primary purpose of that sort of preaching is to move you emotionally. Now, none of those three approaches are incompatible with a Lutheran approach. But, and here is what is important, None of those are at the heart of the Lutheran experience of preaching. In a Lutheran sermon, my job is pretty straightforward. It is to invite you to encounter the gospel, to encounter the good news inside a text. 
You might be familiar with the phrase law and gospel. Law shows us where we fall short, where we need God, and gospel shows us who God is and drives us into the arms of love. Every week when you are here, you should hear about a gracious God that loves you so profoundly and so completely. Every week, every week you should hear that from me, that God loves you. And I would hope that instead of that being an intellectual exercise, something you can pare it back, yes, God loves us, pastor, we know that God loves us, pastor, you tell us every week that God loves us, that you come to experience it deep within you, the places beyond your thinking, the places in your deepest self and in your deepest life. The sermon invites you to experience grace in the particular places of your life that need God's love. Because when you encounter that deep grace, when it moves from something you think about to something you experience, something that shapes you and reorients you, something that has teeth and a grip on your life, your entire life is transformed. You become a different person. The experience of God's love makes you a different person. Not the knowledge, but the experience. Like we see in today's story about Lydia. Now, we don't know a ton about Lydia in the book of Acts. Paul encounters her likely at the beginning of a worship service outdoors, where Paul is acting as kind of the guest rabbi. The text tells us that Lydia was a dealer in purple cloth, which means she owned her own business, managed her own home, and was in a profession that meant she often interacted with the rich, the royal, and the powerful. She was in charge of her household. So Lydia was a person who had made a name for herself, a woman who had made a name for herself at a time and in a culture where this was remarkable. However, she was also a hungry person. She was looking for something. Luke tells us that she was drawn to the worship of God even though she was a Gentile, likely someone who had little experience with the particular ways of God. And it is here, at this worship service, in the midst of her great hunger, that Paul encounters her. And here is where it gets interesting. The text tells us that in that moment, God opened her heart to listen to Paul. And in response, she was baptized, her and her whole household. While we only have a couple of verses about Lydia in the New Testament, I find her story so compelling. It is because she was hungry that leads to her being baptized and the baptism of her house, which then leads to her turning around immediately and offering deep and profound hospitality. And it is this hospitality for which Lydia is known in the scriptures. Quite simply, Lydia had encountered grace and it had turned her outward. Something in her life was empty or lacking or hungry, or yearning, or not quite complete. Something was off, and God took that ache and turned it toward grace and love, and then turned her outward. Lydia is the patron saint of high-achieving, incredible people. But she shows us that it is from our hungers, not our brains, that God speaks to us. It is from our hungers that God's grace and love come alive in our entire life. So, what are you hungry for? What is the deep ache within you? What are you yearning for in this life? Maybe you have been a Lutheran your whole life and you have always heard about the God of grace and love. But for the first time, life is hard. A diagnosis, a loved one, fear of the future, a death, mental illness, physical illness. You have heard about grace your whole life, but suddenly you actually need it. Suddenly you need to be wrapped in arms of profound love, and it is here for you. God's arms of love are here for you. Maybe you are new to church and just learning about this whole grace thing, but you are hungry. Something is off. Something feels like it's missing. There is an ache within you, and it is your hunger that has led you here. You need to be wrapped in arms of profound love, 
It is here for you too. God's deep, transforming love is here for you too. Or maybe you're okay. You're okay in this moment of your life. Guess what? You are the profound, the, you are the arms of profound love. Perhaps it is your season to offer that to others, knowing that when you need grace, you can turn around and find it here too. For God has no hands but yours and no feet but ours. That is what Lydia shows us. Andrew, Alicia, Ricardo, today you are Lydia to us. Today you model for us what it means to sit in the presence of God, to let your hunger drive you forward, to be baptized and welcomed as a household, and then to immediately welcome the congregation through a reception that you are throwing for us. Today you show us what it means to be Lydia. We give thanks for your story and your gifts and your presence, for already you teach us about God. Today, you are Lydia for us. Tomorrow, may we be Lydia's for one another. Thanks be to God. Amen.